admire Margaret Sanger enormously, her courage, her tenacity, her vision. That was Hillary Clinton back in 2009 at the Planned Parenthood Honors Gala, praising the founder of the organization, Margaret Sanger. So who is Margaret Sanger? Well, you might have thought she's a nice person based on the way that Hillary Clinton just introduced her. But guess what? She's a racist. She believed in eliminating races that she believed were inferior. But don't take our word for it. Back in 1939, Sanger said the following, we do not want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population, and the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. Well, Planned Parenthood has since kind of disavowed Sanger's racism, but her name was still on the New York City locations that it has up to about two years ago, so much for cancel culture. Unfortunately, the abortion provider still upholds Sanger's ideology today, one that disproportionately affects disadvantages, disadvantaged black and brown women. Protecting Black Life notes that nearly 80% of Planned Parenthood's abortion clinics are either in or walking distance from Black and Hispanic communities. The Guttmacher Institute even admits that the staggering statistics, Black women make up 13% of the female population, and yet they receive 36% of the abortion. Sanger sought out ministers and other clergy members to ensure that the religious communities never found out about her real plan. Even today, faith leaders continue to support Planned Parenthood and their pro-abortion mission. Joining us with Reaction is author of Black Eye for America, How Critical Race Theory is Burning Down the House, retired political science and law professor at Vanderbilt University, Dr. Carol Swain, along with retired NFL player and commissioner on the Commission of the Social Status of Black Men and Boys, Jack Brewer. Thank you both for being with us. Dr. Swain, I want to start with you. If a Republican praised a racist, the way that Hillary Clinton praised Dr. Sanger, there would be all sorts of people talking for the cancellation. Why, why don't more people know about that? Why don't they get called out the way that Republicans would? If Republicans yeah, supported Planned Parenthood, they would be accused of genocide because uh, if they, um, the abortion agenda is a genocidal agenda. And what the Democrats have cleverly done is to convince black women that somehow they are on their side and that uh, the progressive agenda is something that is in the interests of black people. Jack, let me ask you this. Why, why do you think clergy members continue to partner with Planned Parenthood? I, when we were doing this series, I learned so much about not only their racist history, but that these clergy members, people who are supposed to be talking about God and life and all of his vision, are partnering with an organization that seeks to end life and, frankly, is racist. You're right, Sean, but the Bible teaches us about false prophets um, and that they will rise up um, across uh, the world, and that's what we're seeing right now. Uh, you bring up a, a great point, uh, and it's a sad one. You know, it's a sad one. You're seeing the results of this. You see uh, the black, black population now is the most fatherless population. I'm in the state of Pennsylvania now, almost a million fatherless kids. You have over 18 and a half million fatherless kids across the, the country. And so the order of God has been challenged from the highest levels, and that's starting with the clergy members. Uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, sometimes when you, when you take the most underserved, voiceless population, they're eaten from the inside. You know, there's no differently than the, the chiefs that, that put the slaves on the slave trade. And now we have uh, false teachers and false prophets running our churches and community centers. Uh, that are pushing uh, this child sacrifice upon our land. Uh, it really is sick. Uh, I think the spiritual effects of this uh, are something that we cannot deny. Uh, there's a curse uh, on people of color in the United States of America uh, because of these abominations that are happening before our eyes. And people like Hillary Clinton uh, in the left uh, that really take advantage. I mean, I was fooled when I was a, a young kid, 15, 16 years old, uh, lied to that. Uh, babies aren't born yet, and until this day and age, they're not alive. And just this antichrist uh, doctrine that was taught to me and so many other uh, folks in the inner city areas and folks in communities that uh, don't truly understand what's going on. And so the, the, the vision of Margaret Sanger right now is alive and well in the country, uh, and hopefully our Supreme Court justices rise up uh, to put an end to one of the, the most horrific atrocities happening in the United States of America. And it's and important I would to like to, right, well, Dr. Swain, 
Sean mentioned this. When you look at 80% of Planned Parenthoods are in minority communities, I mean, that's concerning. And that black women are having 36% of abortions only make up 13% of, of the population. How do you end this cycle? Yes, and uh, black women, it was 37% of the abortions. And they are cooperating with the people that are actually trying to destroy black people. That's the progressives. And whether it's defund the police when the blows that there is a devaluation of life in the black community, they are cooperating with progressives that uh, have no interest in black lives. In fact, they're more interested in population control. And I think you would end it with education. The black church has failed black people because the pastors have sold out to the Democratic Party. They're very adept and very efficient at greasing the palms of a few people to get them to cooperate. And so um, we have a situation where there's no spiritual leadership in the black community. The black elites have no real interest in black people. They're interested in advancing themselves and their political agenda. And so the black community is leaderless, except for organizations like the Woodson Center. And there are other organizations that work in the communities at the grassroots level they are helping uh, black um, communities. And there's so many black leaders that you never see on TV that are out there in the trenches. They care. But for the most part, the ones that you see on TV that are associated with the Democratic Party, they're about advancing themselves and that progressive, destructive agenda that is genocidal for the, for the black community. You know, Jack, Senator Tim Scott, he was bought, born into poverty. He's been very outspoken about this in a recent op-ed, writing about it, uh, saying if abortion is our first and best answer to ensure that women of low income and their families can thrive, then we're in a very dark place. So you talked about you believed this narrative. How did you stop believing this narrative? What did it take? Only have about 30 seconds for you, sadly. It, it took salvation to Jesus Christ. And like, like Tim said, the majority of my cousins and family members were born into poverty. We, came, we, didn't, we didn't come from money. Uh, we came, my mom and dad went to segregated schools, had an, out, an outhouse in, up until 1972. Uh, but I want to say to Mr. Swain, also organizations like mine, the Jack Brewer Foundation, we work in the prisons, in the juveniles. We're taking the fatherless kids, the most underserved, voiceless kids across America, uh, and we're trying to give them hope and show them that th this is an America that has a dream, a dream that they can all live to aspire to accomplish uh, if they just set their minds to it and don't believe anybody that they're oppressed. Uh, and so we try to do that through the word of God uh, and bring them back. Uh, morality to our country. We have a sin problem in our country when we can look at a uh, sin happening before our eyes and not stand up for righteousness according to the word of God. That's where our problems come from. Yeah. All right, Dr. Carol Swain, Jack Brewer, thank you for the truth that you spoke here tonight. Thanks for your time. God bless you. All right. Well, tomorrow in our series, Row the Politics of Life, we'll break down the latest polling on how Americans really feel, Sean, about abortion. Plus, we'll talk about to two law lawmakers who are at the forefront of the fight for life, what they're doing to protect the unborn and help families who are in need. You're not going to want to miss that. I'm excited about that. Coming up, though, a reporter faces potential expulsion from the White House Correspondents Association after asking Jen Psaki to address the back row of reporters. We're going to break down the latest with our company. That's right after the break.